Turn off your lights. Make sure your doors and windows are locked. Things are about to get spooky. I thought it was a watermelon. By Anonymous. Kind of a strange glitch in the Matrix, so bear with me. But I feel like I somehow manifested the reality I wanted. <laughs> My partner and I went to the store together for the first time in a while yesterday, so that I could get a fruit tray and he could get some snacks. We end up grabbing a random tray on our way through to find his cheese snacks. When we got home and cracked it open, we realized we got the wrong one. I wanted one with cantaloupe in it, and we picked up the one that had watermelon. I mentioned this to him, but said I'd eat the watermelon anyways, I supposed. He tried it and said that he didn't actually like watermelon, but it had honeydew, which he did like, so that was fine. I say I ate about half of the watermelon before we put it up for the night. I went to work and then took a nap when I got home. Well, I just got up and we got the tray back out and when I opened it, where there had been watermelon was now all cantaloupe. I kind of blankly stared at it and processed to turn to him and say, Wasn't this watermelon yesterday? He said, yes, remember we had the conversation about how I don't like watermelon? I proceeded to show him the tray, and he is just as confused as I am. I then checked the list of fruit on the tray to see if it had been layered with watermelon on top and cantaloupe on the bottom or something. Nope, watermelon isn't listed on the box at all. Not only that, but I remember there being leftover watermelon, and there's no trace of it now. We're now completely confused. What a strange glitch. The serial killer's letter to the police stated that on this date, he would begin killing people using the instrument of their own sins as his murder weapons. And sure enough, an unfortunate victim turned up today stabbed to death with a snapped off turn signal indicator of his own BMW. I saw what happened today last week by Zenahaz. On March 21st, China played against Singapore in 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifications. AFC second round. I live in North America, so the match was in the morning. When I checked China's social platform at 11 a.m. that day, Zihu, Bali, and my QQ group chats, I saw news saying that China won 4-1 and Wu Li scored two goals and one assist with many people discussing the performance. Not bad, I said to myself, and then I closed the website without reading the actual post, and went on to do other things. I didn't fall asleep or dream of the event, nor was I influenced by any substance or mental issues. When I opened the website again around 1am, the title of the post looked different. Looked like China had a disappointing and frustrating 2-2 draw and people were mad everywhere on the internet. I hadn't watched our national team play for a long time, just like what a Chinese who want a stable mental and happy life would do, so I didn't really pay attention. I thought that maybe those posts earlier were talking about a previous match against Singapore, and they were pushing it to my main pages because new relays as a result of the disappointing draw. And guess what happened several hours ago? China won 4-1 to one against Singapore, with Wu Li scoring two goals and one assist. China hasn't played against Singapore for a long time, and the 4-1 to one score never appeared between the two teams before. The score actually hadn't appeared in the match result records of earlier teams for the years. I know Malaysia 4-1 Singapore last year, but that was different, not what I read. 
The chat history of QQ is stored. I checked it and apparently the score 4 to 1 was never mentioned until several hours ago. I contact my family members and friends in China, but no one could explain what I read on March 21st last week. Quick side note for me, if I mispronounced anything, I'm very sorry. Don't worry, it won't hurt. We picked out a wonderful branch just for you, said the swinging corpse of my sister, pointing to a noose which now dangled nearby. Thomas cried out when he saw his two daughters hanging from the gnarled oak, and then one of them opened her eyes and said, Don't be sad, Daddy, please. We have a branch for you, too. Never experienced anything like this. Multiplying game pieces. Bye, no more please. So I have this favorite bar I go to every weekend. It's this alternative goth bar with a game board called Zigzag. If you're not familiar, it's basically a bunch of little pucks and two sides of board, both with rubber bands that you use to try and fling the pucks to the other person's side. I've gotten very good at the game and very few people ever beat me. On Saturday, I followed the tradition of going over to the zigzag table to play a game with two friends taking it along. Please note that at this point, we had all just been sharing one drink at the house and we were barely even tipsy. I saw the board only had six pucks. The game generally comes with 12 when you buy it, but for as long as I've been going, it's never been a full amount, cause yeah, it's a bar and things get lost. I played with 10, but in the last several months, it's usually eight. And then this last few weeks, it's only been seven, so we usually put one to the side and play with six. On this day, there were only six, and I expressed a little annoyance that the pieces kept disappearing when I love this game so much. As a joke, I picked up four of the six pieces and said, Well, now everyone can just play with two, and then dramatically threw the four pieces down on the board. Somehow, ten pucks came flying out of my hands and scattered along the board, making it a full set of 12. I was utterly baffled and just stared shocked and then kept saying, how did that happen? My two friends thought I was doing a magic trick and asked me how until I promised them I had no idea what was going on and they could see how truly confused and shocked I was. We all sat there trying to understand for five minutes and then walked away, now creeped out by the board. I told a few people, but no one believed me. I ended up playing a few games later with a randoms and we had all 12 pieces. One of the people who didn't believe me said that they had at least seen earlier that there were definitely only six and now there are 12. What in the hell? I have literally never experienced anything like this before, and I wasn't on any psychedelics, and I wasn't drunk, and two of my friends saw it also. I have no explanation. Are all the people in the village equal? asked the young man. 10 points for a man, 10 points for a woman, 5 for a child, and 15 for a pregnant woman, I explained to the young soldier as I handed over some ammo. Teleporting fish? By some dude somewhere 12. So me and my friends go swimming on the weekends, and we have this toy fish we always take with us and mess around with it, either throwing it or picking it up from the pool floor or playing football with it underwater. We go to the pool to gym where this is also a hot tub. My friend told me to drop the fish in the hot tub while we were in it, 
and then we could not find this fish anywhere. We were super confused of where it could have gone since there wasn't any holes big enough for the fish to have gone through in the hot tub, but concluded despite this, it must have got sucked into one of the hot tub jets. We were pretty disappointed to have lost our fish toy, but figured we wouldn't see it again. However, once we got back in his car for him to take me home after our swim, I noticed that somehow the fish was back in the little storage slot on his dashboard we normally kept it in. I was like, what the fuck, it's the fish? To him, I thought he was messing with me and had grabbed the fish in the hot tub and pretend it was missing. He also thought I was messing with him. Once we confirmed neither of us played a trick on the other, we both felt pretty freaked out and spent the whole drive being like, What the fuck? How did the fish get there? It makes no sense. Please, please save my son. The mother cried. My heart sank at the fact that I gave up my body to help my lifelong best friend have a child she desperately want, and she didn't think twice to choose a fetus over me. Red Bag Tab Glitch by Cataminus I made myself a sandwich this morning because I was hungry. You know that little plastic tab we use to close the bag of bread? Yeah, the tab that disappears all the time and leaves us doing the spin and tuck to keep the bread fresh? Per the usual, I was looking for the tab after I was done making my sandwich. Of course, it's not anywhere within sight. I lift the plate with the sandwich on it. It's not under the plate. As I set the plate down, I hear this little click. I lift the plate again and lo and behold, the tab was there probably just stuck out of the plate. As I reached out to grab the tab, a second identical tab fell down from the bottom of the plate. I just thought, holy shit, I've experienced a glitch. I gotta tell the whole world. Side note, that's when I made the first comment on your community post. But I was hungry. Rather than closing the bag with one of the tabs, I did the spin and tuck. I set the tabs next to each other on the counter. I thought I'd take a photo of them when I was done eating. I know a photo is no solid proof that I experienced a glitch, but it's something. I ate my sandwich at the counter right next to the tabs while browsing on my phone. When I was done eating and ready to take a photo, there was only one tab on the counter. I checked the counter, the floor, the loaf of bread, and under the plate. No second tab. There was no wind, no pets nearby, and I certainly didn't hear any sounds that indicated the tab fell or was moved. I have no idea what happened to the second tab. Side note, that's when I made my second comment on your post. I didn't feel scared or chilled by this incident. I just thought it was hilarious and couldn't stop laughing about it. I told my husband, knowing full well he wouldn't believe me. To my surprise, he smiled, nodded, and said, 22 people die each year from eating that tab. It's a joke from a stand-up comedian. Nevertheless, I'm glad I'm alive and well, despite experiencing this rather innocent double glitch. They say I'm a sadistic killer using ancient methods to torture people for fun. But that's not true at all. She frowns at her captive and says, The goal here isn't to hurt you, only to use experimental archaeology to learn whether scaling truly makes the flailing smoother, considering those primitive tools. Teleported again, this time multiple times, by Almost Jaded. Hello again, Glitch. Been a while. Like, years. Most of you probably don't know my stories. 
I'm not going to rehash them again. If you're that bored, you can scroll all the way back in my history. As usual, I'll provide details for any locals. 22 months ago to the day, I relocated from Vegas to southern Mexico, La Crocus area. My previous experiences happened in Vegas area and partly in Utah. I haven't had one of these instances in several years, and no glitches of any kind since moving here. Until today. On my way to a client's house in West El Paso slash Sunland Park, I had driven to this house half a dozen times in the last two weeks. I know the way by heart, but I still use NAV because there's major construction on I-10 between Cacruz and El Paso right now. And Google lets me know about closures and delays. Today, it says there's a 27-minute delay. That's the first weirdness. I practically flew through the construction. All the red spots on the nav just weren't. No delays, made the usual 55 minute trip these days in under 40. When I got to the Sunland Parkway exit, the nav still said my ETA was the same despite this. Weird. And here's where it goes off the rails. Age client lives off of Mesa Hills, past Mesa. Two different roads and this matters, so please keep it straight. Sunland Parkway goes through to Mesa. Both of these are large arterials with both of the businesses. Beyond Mesa, from the freeway, Sunland turns into mostly residential neighborhoods. Mesa Hill is a much smaller road that leads to the same nicer houses up to the hill, again past Mesa. But it winds down from Mesa and curves into Sunland Parkway between the freeway and Mesa. Hopefully you follow all of that. Because I'm early, I decided I wanted to stop and grab a taco. The nav says to turn onto Mesa Hill, but I decided to go straight and stop at Taco Bell that's right off of SP slash Mesa intersection. So I go straight, stop at the next lighty, go through the intersection, and suddenly I'm in the residential park of Sunland Parkway, past Mesa, like I drove through a portal, and I'm just really confused. That's a fair way up the road. No way I zoned out that stretch of road in that time it took me to cross an intersection. Also, less than two minutes have passed on the clock. Whatever, you turn, get to the light that should be Mesa. And I'm back by the freeway. There's the Alta, the Stanton Optical, Barnes & Noble, Best Buy. I never crossed Mesa. If I continued straight, I'd be back on the I-10. Now, I'm really weirded out. I look at the clock, less than three minutes have passed. That's impossible. I turn on to Mesa Hill. I drive on Mesa Hill for way too long. Landmarks are out of place. I feel like I've been driving for 15 minutes. I look at the clock. It's been four. I get on Mesa on Mesa Hills, at least to exist here, I guess. I'm still way ahead of schedule, which... Shouldn't it be possible with the distances I've covered? I turn left to head back towards Sunland Parkway, and then apparently interdimensional Taco Bell. I noticed that all the construction that was on the Mesa last time I was here a couple days ago is gone, so, well, that's nice. I get to my Taco Bell. I turn back onto Mesa and head back to Mesa Hill. All the construction is back. All of it. The left lane is torn up. There's a cone and trucks and crap, and I can't turn left onto Mesa Hill because the construction is blocking it. None of this was here five minutes ago. I look up at the clock and suddenly I'm running late. 
all the time that I should have taken to get up and back to Sunland and then up to Miss a Hill is suddenly back on the clock. Either that or I spent 17 minutes in the drive through That would be it, except it isn't. I worked for about 90 minutes. I look up at the clock. Over three hours have passed. I didn't fall asleep or anything my client would have noticed. I have no idea where the extra two hours went. What the fuck? Screw this. Now it's rush hour. I better hurry to get home. I'm going to be in traffic forever. Got home through the construction during rush hour through the areas Nav said were backed up in 32 minutes. I wasn't driving fast. I'm confused and feel very detached. I didn't like this. And just to give you guys a heads up, Opie has given me permission to read the backlog of their stories, so those will be showing up in other Glitch in the Matrix videos for you guys. As we pass the bottle of hooch around the campfire, we regard one another with stories of the worst things we had ever done. Everyone started laughing when I said I poisoned the alcohol, until the first person threw up, and another one fell on the ground in uncontrollable convulsions. Timeline Jump by Joshua Lee 14. So there's been other things that I can't think of right now, but while it's still fresh in my memory, day before yesterday, when getting ready for bed, I was looking for these AirPods in the white case. I could not find them anywhere. I'm a stay-at-home single dad with a three-year-old, and I usually keep these headphones within arm's reach, either charging or on the TV stand when not in use. I knew I had set them there in the usual spot, but alas, nothing. I searched the house, knowing the whole time where I had left them. I'm home with my baby all day, and our routine is pretty concrete. Well, after an hour of intense searching, I gave up and went to bed. I got up the next day and it began like all the others, when after about 30 minutes of just waking up, there in the usual spot on the TV was the headphones. I got a cold chill instantly as this is not the only thing that this has happened to, but I can't recall some of the other times as of writing this. No one comes in here. No one has a key. It's just me and my baby. She didn't move them, nor would she have done it just to mess with me. I mean, I look into this one spot, which is just a flat top of the TV stand with a TV on it, at least eight times the night before. The other thing was the toilet. About a week or so ago, I noticed that the toilet needed cleaning. It wasn't totally gross or anything, but it was time for a scrub, if you know what I mean. Then around two days ago, I noticed it was clean. I thought, the hell did I do that? I'm wondering about my level of sanity. But a while ago, I noticed it was dirty again. Dirty. Again. Like, the misplaced headphones were weird, but the toilet cleaning and the resoiling itself with the exact same patterns of dirt is something I'll never be able to get past. Am I crazy, or has at least one other person experienced something similar? As soon as I heard the gunshots, I grabbed the little girl with a bunny backpack standing next to me and ran into one of the stores in the mall. While peeking from behind the wooden counter, I saw that the shooters were all small children and then felt something pressed against my head by the little girl behind me. Glitching Pet Parrot, maybe, by Anonymous. I have a cockatiel named Colby. I adopted him in January from an animal shelter, and ever since I have experienced what I can only describe as a glitch. 
This bird seems to duplicate for a couple of seconds and then duplicate Kobe just disappears. For instance, yesterday I was in my room with him and he was in the cage playing with some toys and all of a sudden I can see him take off from the closet, flying across the room, then lands on the curtain rod. At first I thought, oh, okay, he climbed out while I wasn't paying attention. Then I look and he's not on the curtain rod. The bird is still in his cage, happily chewing on his wooden block and has been for a while considering the amount of damage to it. I know I have horrible eyesight, but there is no way you can mistake a gray and yellow bird with bright orange cheeks flying across the room for anything else. A second instant of him dupa came before our very eyes happened when my mom was in the room with me. Kobe has a ladder that I put across his cage to my bed, that way he can come and go as he pleases. One day when I first got him, my mom and I were in my room having him practice stepping up for non-bird parents stepping onto one's finger. So he get used to us. He eventually got tired of it, so we put him on the bed to chill out and started having conversation about my wanting to redo my room. Midway through the conversation, my mom stopped mid-sentence and started talking to the bird, who's going up the ladder to his cage. I turn to smile at him and then I feel a sharp pinch on my toe and yell out. My mom and I both look down expecting it to have accidentally found a sewing needle or something with my foot, but it was Colby attacking my foot. We both look at the ladder and he's not there. There's no way he could have gone from the ladder to the end of my bed without one of us noticing. It's not carbon monoxide. We recently tested at a friend's insistence. So, I have no idea what is going on, but the bird is glitched. It's just a prank, bro. Why are you getting so upset? I continue recording as the man covered in hives struggled to dig the EpiPen out of the peanut butter filled kiddie pool making sure my viewers would get a good look at his face when he found out it was fake anyway. Disappearing Dissection Tool by Anonymous So I'm 19 and in university. I'm autistic, ADHD, and have general slash social anxiety and a history of depression but I have no history of hallucinations or psychosis. All my issues are neurotypic and medicated for. I don't do drugs in fear of it messing with my anxiety meds. Also, I have no history of bad side effects with my meds. Today I had my final lab in biology class where I dissected a bird. Part of the dissection was taking out a lung, which I need a probe for. I used the probe to take the lung out, then put the probe on the tray where there was no gunk. When I use tools, I try not to put them back on the workbench to avoid contamination. After finishing the rest of the dissection, I had to dispose of the specimen. In university, you're responsible for cleanup. Me and the TAs will not take your tools when you're done with them. You are also supposed to clean up when you finished with everything and sharing tools isn't allowed, so there was no reason for any of my tools not to be in the tray. I put the body of the bird on a larger tray as directed, then went to clean up my tools before disposing of the scraps in the biohazard bin. When I took the tools out of the tray, I saw that I had the forceps, the scissors, and scalpel, but no probe. Huh? Maybe I accidentally put it with the bird? Nope. Was it still at my station, on the floor, in someone else's tray, which isn't allowed, but still. Not at all. I spent a few minutes looking, but then gave up and just focused on the rest of my cleanup. After putting everything away, I looked at my now empty workstation and my partner's too. No probe in sight. So, if my TAs are reading this, sorry, I guess the probe's in the back rooms now. 
And if someone finds a dissection probe out of nowhere, please clean it up. It may have bird guts on it. My fellow Alpha and I were locked in a tense staring contest. I grossly underestimated his desire to win when he brought out a razor blade and started slicing his eyelids off. Why does this keep happening? By 242, aka me. So I want to start this off with, I don't vape. I have never smoked, vaped, or anything. I tried smoking when I was a teenager, did not like it, and never picked it up. But I now own three vapes, and the last one has me shocked. So I had a co-worker at my last job that when we met, she didn't vape. She, besides me, has been in the car the most. I gave her rides home, and then near the end of her time working with me, took her to and from work. I won't lie, there are days I miss that and having lunch with her. We talked a lot, but that is not the glitch. Vape 1, the blue vape. It's not a glitch at all. She asked me to take it from her. It was this blue one-time use. It was almost dead, but she didn't want to be tempted with it, so I took it from her, and that was that. Vape 2. This one is a glitch, maybe. She had started hanging out with an old friend who got her back into vaping, and to be fair, she was stressed out. She vaped in high school, but had stopped when we met, and it was only when she started hanging out with this friend she started to vape, which, I mean, it happens. We talked over the lunches and stuff about her wanting to quit. She had a vacation coming up, and she said during that she and her friend were going to quit. Her friend didn't, but she did. Well, early on, she had a super stressful week, and we had agreed that I wouldn't let her vape, so I took it from her. I had a windshield cover on the floor in my back seat and put it in there. I remember this because I thought it will be hard to see in the black and she won't find it. Well, that day got worse and she begged me for the vape. I gave in because she was really not okay. I went to grab it, and it's not on the cover. She checked under the seat, nothing. I looked through the cover fully, and we never found it. We searched for it off and on for about a month till we said my car ate it. Well, she left that job and so did I. This was six months to a year later. I cleaned that car fully. And on the back seat, plain as day, under a windshield wiper fluid bottle, is her black vape. My seats are gray, and it didn't blend in that great. I had looked on the back seat a few times in our looks, because I was planning to give it back to her so she could sell it. I picked up the vape, looked at it, very confused. I took the photo and we both laughed our asses off. She was so happy it went missing in the end. She hasn't started back up, and I'm very proud of her for that. If you're hearing this, girl, you're awesome, and I'm so happy me and my car could help you kick it. That is all the vapes I knew in my car, two sitting in my driver's side cover thing. But now I have three, so let me tell you the one that I'm 100% a glitch. Vape 3. How the hell did I get you? So this Saturday, I'm driving home from work. I bought this dashboard phone holder, and these little rubber holders fell off. One flew at my leg, and I'm looking for it on the seat, between the seat, and then I think maybe it's in the e-brake area. So I sigh and reach in past the weird wire stuff so things can't fall in there, but this car is old and stuff does get in there. I feel this really big, odd thing. It's not the rubber thing at all. I carefully grab and pull it out. And here is vape number three. It's mermaid look and color. My coworker never had this vape that I can recall. I took a photo and she said maybe it's hers, but she doesn't think so, and I don't think it is either. 
She mostly had the black one, but either way, she only ever lost the black one. I'm also the second owner of this car, more like third, but either way, I have dug into there many times just to make sure it's clear because it's an e-brake and you never know, and I know stuff falls into there. I'm not one to give rides to others all that much. I can name five people that have been in my car and the only one that vaped or smoked besides the original owner was my coworker. And I have put my hand in that e-brake thing a few times. The only thing I can think of is a mechanic dropped it, but my car hasn't been in the shop for months and I'm sure I checked the e-brake since then. Also, the mechanics I go to are all men, and this is for sure a female vape. I've also officially thrown out all three vapes, but I do have on screen right now for you all three of them in the order that I told you the story. So yeah, um, for someone who didn't vape at all, I sure owned a lot of them at one point. Me and my son were asked to take a group selfie after we performed at a Swedish underground nightclub. The group surrounded us as the club owner held up his phone, showing that me and my baby were the only ones visible in the selfie. And with that, our time together was coming to an end. If you have a story you would like me to narrate, there are three ways you can send them to me. All the ways are down below in the show notes slash description box for you guys. I also like to thank my patrons and members who help support this channel. Their names are on screen right now. Last but never least, I'd like to thank the writers who let me read their stories this evening. It was a bit of a variety of different stories this time. I think I tried one time to do a theme for Glitch in the Matrix was like items disappearing and it did horribly so I just do a mixture of Glitch in the Matrix stories for you guys. I had to submit one this time about the bag tags and one that was happening to me. I personally didn't think anything of the vape until that third one showed up. Me and her both laughed about the black one reappearing, how we basically went, yeah, the car ate it so she could quit. But this third one was just like, where did you come from? I do not recognize this because she mostly used the black one. And she never touched another one after I stole the black one from her. So it was just really weird this third one showing up. And then game pieces disappearing, and then all of a sudden reappearing fully, teleporting fish, you know, watermelon turning into cantaloupe for you, which that one was really weird. And teleporting to different places in a little stretch of area, and then being late, and also time disappearing, so you spent three hours somewhere where you should only spend an hour and a half. And... Disappearing tools, which, I don't know, but to me, disappearing tools is just something going weird. I don't know what happened to it, but with me misplacing so many things, I'm just like, you probably just put it down somewhere weird, or, you know, the school ate it, and pet parrot walking on the bed when it's really not, and yeah, and pre-seeing the future is also uh, kind of a normal glitch, I find, actually. But... I really actually enjoy reading these Legends of the Matrix. It's one of the reasons why I narrate them. One, people really do enjoy them, but it's also just, they're not scary scary, but they're really bizarre and odd, and that's why I like reading them so much, because it just makes you question, are you going crazy, or is something else happening? And sometimes it just feels like something's happening, like your car ate something. Of course, if you enjoy these videos, hit that like button and make sure it feels it. If you're new, please subscribe and turn that pretty little bell to all notifications. And I would always love a comment. Tell me what you thought, what kind of stories you would like in the future, stuff like that. If you're listening through the podcast, 
please leave me a review if you're able to. And if you're on Spotify, there are questions that you can answer as well. But of course, just sharing this channel slash podcast with anyone who might like it really helps quite a bit. And if you'd like to help in other ways, I do have Patreon and members, like I said before, where for a dollar a month, you get early access and a few other bonuses depending on the tier you take. I also have PayPal, buy me a coffee and super thanks if you guys just want to do like a one-time donation kind of thing. All that stuff is never expected, but always appreciated. And like all YouTubers, if you don't mention it, no one ever seems to notice. Same thing with subscribing, liking, all that jazz. They've done studies, they've proven if you don't mention it, people don't notice it. It's really bizarre. But as always guys, thank you so much for watching and listening. It always has and always will mean the world to me. I like knowing people enjoy me finding these stories and narrating them for you. I'd probably still be reading if I wasn't narrating. Sleep tight and don't let 42 bite.